Okay, so just an overview of some um, features of the, the older keypad. We've got the X6C um, serial port down here. So if you're using serial speed control to the controller, that's where you would plug the serial cable in. We have an X6B uh, diagnostic port. Um, if you're using the inverter scoping software Comniviz, this is where you would plug that into. And then the keypad screen itself here, LED display, that's where your parameter name, parameter number is going to show up. And then uh, we have uh, uh, enter, start, stop, and function uh, buttons. That's going to be how you view parameters, how you change parameters. And then the release tab at the top. A uh, quick note on the release tab at the top. Um, sometimes, depending upon the housing, the keypad might not snap right away when you put it in. Um, that little release tab must always snap up uh, in order for the keypad to be properly seated. If it's not properly seated, we could have some communication errors, uh, intermittent communication errors going forward. The parameter structure is, is, is laid out here. On all the way to the left, we've got the parameter offset number. In the middle, we've actually got the parameter group name. And then on the right, we've got the parameter uh, number itself. The flashing cursor is what is going to dictate what you can change. So wherever the flashing cursor is on the screen is going to, is going to allow you to change either the parameter number, group, or the offset. If you wish to view a parameter, um, you will go on to the parameter number that you wish to view and hit function. Uh, that'll bring the value that is in, the, in that parameter number. If you wish to change it, you can arrow up, arrow down, uh, and, and hit enter to change the actual value. If you don't hit enter, the, the new number that you see will not be stored. So it's absolutely critical that you hit enter to store the, the new parameter value. In this particular example, it is the uh, fault log in the, in the keypad, so you're wondering, you know, what, what faults do I have? What, what faults have I seen? Um, the most recent fault is going to be in 0LF98. That's going to be the one that, that happened most recently. Um, if you wish to change, see the next most recent fault, is what you would do is hit the Enter button. The flashing cursor will move over uh, all the way to the left-hand side of the screen. You will arrow up to 1, and then you'll hit Function. And then the, the corresponding value, or in this case, fault, will appear uh, for you. If you wish to reset the fault log, um, if you're troubleshooting and, and you wanna, um, you're wondering, you know, the faults that I see, did they happen an hour ago? Did they happen a day ago? Uh, is what you would do is go to 0LF98. You'll hit function to view the fault, hit the up arrow, scroll down to 10, and hit enter. That will load uh, no P into all of the, the fault log parameters. That way you can tell, OK, am I getting a new fault moving forward. Uh, a couple of common groups of parameters that you're going to see. Uh, LF, that's where you're going to spend most of your time. And uh, US, for, for basic setup. Uh, you will spend a little bit of time in, in the US group. We do have some advanced um, um, programming uh, functionality in, in the US parameters. But um, for the most part, you're going to spend your time in the, the LF and US group. Uh, we also have the RU parameter group. This is used for, for diagnostics only. Uh, all of these parameters are read only. Uh, you can't actually change them. Uh, they're strictly just used for, for diagnostics. And then we also have the, the DI and D, DO groups, and that's where you're going to set your, your inputs and your outputs. <laughs> All right, so moving on to our, our LCD keypad, um, we've, we've increased the size of the, the screen. We've added a few extra buttons, as well as some diagnostic ports. Um, all of this helps as far as troubleshooting goes, it makes setting up the drive uh, much easier as well. Uh, so X6D. Uh, that's a diagnostic port. That's what you would use to plug in your cable if you have uh, our inverter programming software, Comniviz 6. Uh, X6C, that's going to be the CAN or RS-485 serial port. That's what you would connect to your controller 
for serial speed control. Uh, we have the same enter, uh, up, down, and escape buttons here. But we also added these uh, F1 through F4 hotkeys. Uh, these give you some advanced um, menu options. Uh, we added a few extra functionality and, and uh, parameter groups, and that's where the, the hotkeys will, will come in handy. The LCD display, what you see here is the home screen. Um, you can view multiple parameters on the home screen. This makes setting up diagnostics much, much easier instead of manually going to one parameter at a time, seeing what your motor current is, seeing what your command speed is, or your actual motor speed. Would require going to three different parameters. With the older keypad, we've put everything all on the home screen. Um, we've got the inverter status up on the upper left-hand side, the drive mode on the upper right, motor speed and command speed are in the middle. Uh, those are in RPM values. And then elevator speed on the lower left and motor current on the lower right. So what we're going to do here is some uh, actual hands-on um, navigation of, of the keypads in front of you. So what I'll do is I'll turn, turn the keypads on and um, it's going to start out from a, a default configuration. So I, I do realize that coming from the, the controller manufacturers, they may already be, be slightly programmed. You only have to change a few things. But um, what you're going to see in front of you is if it came off of, um, fresh off of our manufacturing line, you got it in the field, and um, you need to set it up and program it uh, for yourself. So there are a few different um, versions of the keypad you might see in front of you. Um, some actually have a little SD card slot. Um, that is something that we, we used to provide to, to the customers if they wish. For the most part, um, they're not utilizing that right now, but you may see it in the field. So there are some subtle differences. Uh, also, the, there are different versions of software on each keypad. So um, that's, again, that's something you might see in the field as well. But the parameter structure, uh, parameter names, all of that is going to remain the same. So navigating the keypad is, is going to be the same. So I will turn the, the keypads on here. <coughs> 